Fox Studios and Josh Trank's gritty and grounded reboot of the Fantastic Four was a failure both critically and commercially. The film ended up costing Fox tens of millions of dollars and might even cost the careers of some of those involved. In this video, we will look at just how much it might have lost Fox, how it may have affected the careers of those involved, the current status of a sequel, and the possibility that the Fantastic Four might be returning to Marvel sooner than expected. Fant Four Stick hit theaters on August 7, 2015. The film's opening weekend was even lower than the lowest of expectations, coming in at a total of $25,685,737. The movie finished its run in the U.S. with a total domestic box office gross of $56,117,548. At first glance, this barely matches the $56,061,504 the Tim Story directed Fantastic Four grossed in its opening weekend alone. That number is in 2005 dollars. When adjusted for inflation, Josh Trank's Fant Four Stick grossed less in its entire run than the 2005 movie did in its opening weekend. Internationally, Fant Four Stick fared a little bit better, grossing another $111 million for a total worldwide gross of $167,117,548, far less than one would expect for a Marvel-branded movie to gross in the U.S. alone, on the list of the highest grossing movies worldwide in 2015. Fant Forstick comes in at number 44. Fox has admitted to a production budget of $120 million. However, studios tend to downplay production costs to save face when a movie bombs, so the actual budget may have been much higher. Some analysts suggest that the extensive reshoots might have pushed the total budget upwards of $180 million. Even assuming the $120 million figure isn't too far off the mark, that would still leave Fox with a loss in the vicinity of $80 million. To put that into context, the losses of Fant Forstick are such that they will have wiped out the net profit made on the successful X-Men Days of Future Past. Fan Four Stick had such a negative effect on Fox's bottom line that Fox's supreme leader, Rupert Murdoch, singled it out and put the blame squarely at its feet for the decline in the first fiscal quarter. The movie would continue to flop when it was released on Blu-ray and DVD on December 15, 2015. From its launch up until the making of this video, it has grossed a total of $10,810,297 domestically and has long since fallen off the sales charts. By comparison, Ant-Man's home media sales total $48 million, nearly five times as much as those of Fantastic Four. Beyond earnings, the Fantastic Four also received its share of awards. It was off to a promising start when it took home the CinemaCon Best Ensemble Award, that award coming on April 23, 2015, more than three months before anyone had actually seen the film, including CinemaCon's awarding body. After the movie was actually shown, it won Worst Film of the Year from the St. Louis Gateway Film Critics Association, and it would be nominated for a total of five Golden Raspberry Awards, the anti-Oscar show that awards the Worst of the Year. On February 27, 2016, it took home a total of three Razzie Awards for Worst Director, Worst Prequel, Remake, Ripoff, or Sequel, and Worst Picture tied with Fifty Shades of Grey. When a movie flops as spectacularly as this, it is bound to have consequences for some or more of those involved. We have previously covered how those behind the scenes often point fingers elsewhere, leaving others further down in the hierarchy to take the fall, and this is no exception. Fox CEO Jim Giannopoulos and production president Emma Watts were both in positions where they, to their superiors, could take credit for X-Men Days of Future Past and The Martian. Both were greenlit on their watch. But both Watts and Giannopoulos were able to point fingers at Tom Rothman for not only greenlighting Fan Forstick in the first place, but also approving Trank and his direction. Rothman, of course, had already been fired when this went down. So as far as we can tell, no higher-ups behind the scenes faced any repercussions from it. Producers Simon Kinberg and Matthew Vaughn spent every interview last year praising Josh Trank and his vision. It appeared that both were very publicly distancing themselves from the production and that they were setting up Trank and Trank alone to take the fall. Both Kinberg and Vaughn escaped unscathed, something which their other recent successful projects and future ones already lined up no doubt contributed to. 
Josh Trank, however, has seemingly dropped off the face of the earth. Last anyone heard, he had lawyered up as a preemptive measure against a lawsuit from Fox, perhaps over his tweet denouncing the movie on the eve of its premiere. A tweet some analysts say might have cost the movie $10 million in its opening weekend probably wanting to be done with it, rather than dragging out an embarrassing court case for years to come, Fox seemingly has dropped the matter. Even so, Trank has no new projects lined up and no Hollywood studio wants to work with him. His notoriety is such that The Hollywood Reporter even wrote an article about how badly Fant Forstick affected his career and his future prospects. In it, one anonymous Hollywood executive told The Hollywood Reporter that, No executive will go near him. I might take a meeting with him, just to give him advice, but I wouldn't give him a job. In other words, Trank is firmly placed in director's jail, a pariah effectively locked out of studio directing opportunities for the indefinite future. The Hollywood Reporter suggests the only way Trank will ever be allowed another shot at directing is to apologize and eat humble pie and go back to his low-budget roots. He might also try writing a great script or going the television route. Even that's a long shot. Only time will tell if Trank will ever manage to make a comeback or if Fant Forstick ended his career once and for all. A high-profile flop such as Fant Forstick might also affect the actors involved, the faces of the movie. While those involved would notice any decrease in demand fairly soon, unless they tell us, we on the outside won't be able to tell how the various actors' careers were impacted for at least another year. Only then will we be able to ascertain any clear increase or decrease in their output compared to before the movie. Only one of the cast has publicly admitted his career being adversely affected by Fant Forstick, namely Dr. Doom himself, Toby Kebbell. In an interview with IGN, Kebbell revealed that the film roles offered to him dried up after Fant Forstick hit cinemas in August. He explained that, as an actor, you're conscious that your career is at stake with each job, especially on these larger productions. A film like that comes out, and I'm being set maybe four scripts in a week, and those scripts go to zero when it doesn't come out successful. Kebbell expressed regret for not voicing his opinion on the set of the film, insisting that the project would have been better received by fans and critics alike if he had. About his role, Kebbell said, I don't know if I learned anything from Doom, apart from, perhaps, when I see something I don't agree with, to voice that immediately. He doesn't say what he refers to, but it's natural to imagine he refers to the handling of the Doom character, who was mishandled every bit as poorly in Fant Forstick as Deadpool was in X-Men Origins Wolverine. About the fans and their condemnation of the movie, he said that, The fans aren't wrong. The fans want what they want to see, and if they don't get satisfaction, they let you know. I appreciate that as a performer. He went on to admit there should have been more collaboration between the actors, director Josh Trank, and movie executives, telling IGN, I think it's vitally important that if there's a problem on set, that it's voiced and we solve it there, and I think that collaboration is very important. Not to say that didn't happen on set, but the collaboration is vital, and if we don't do that, then we suffer. Miles Teller, the so-called Mr. Fantastic, was highly in demand before the release of Fan Stick. He received high praise and was nominated for a number of awards for the film Whiplash. He had a number of projects lined up, the most high profile of which were more films in the Divergent series and a comedy with Jonah Hill. Around the release of Fan Stick, however, the world learned Whiplash director Damien Chazelle dumped Miles Teller from his second feature La La Land as he was no longer quote-unquote creatively right for the role. Chazelle replaced Teller with Ryan Gosling. Even so, it would appear Teller's career hasn't been too damaged, as he is still offered a steady supply of serious roles in dramatic movies. Rising star Michael B. Jordan was cast as the younger Dr. Dre in Straight Outta Compton. He was also the real-life Dr. Dre's first choice for the role. However, when it turned out that Fant Forstick would be filming at the same time, Jordan chose to drop out of Compton to star in Fant Forstick instead, leaving Straight Outta Compton scrambling to find a replacement. In retrospect, not a great choice, as Straight Outta Compton turned out to be a huge hit. Luckily for Jordan, he already had Creed in the can by the time Fant Forstick bombed, and it being released just a few months later no doubt helped redeem him. In addition to any Creed sequels, he was announced to star in the remake of The Thomas Crown Affair on February 24, 2016. While we don't know anything about how many other offers he has or hasn't gotten, it would appear that Hollywood is giving him another shot. 
Kate Mara had wanted to star in a superhero movie for a long time and had gone to a number of auditions without being picked. As such, the disastrous production and reception of Fan Stick must have been an extra bitter pill to swallow. The three of you, I can't help but like have like a superhero vibe. You guys all have like the Marvel Universe connection. Mine was the biggest success. I just want to put it out there. Yeah. Humble pie. <laughs> Listen, I didn't see you. Neither did the rest huh? of the world. You didn't see uh, it? Anyway. I didn't see it. She also has had several other projects lined up, so her career wasn't seemingly too afflicted. The overwhelmingly negative backlash kept Kate Mara from seeing the movie, but she told the rap in late September that she would see it eventually. As of the making of this video, it is not known if she has seen the film or what she thinks of it. During the production of the movie, there were rumors of an onset romance between her and one of her co-stars. It has since become clear that co-star was Jamie Bell. Jamie Bell didn't speak much before, during, or after the movie. As he is currently starring in the TV series Turn, which has been renewed for a third season, his schedule wouldn't allow him to appear in many movies anyway. With Turn keeping him in the spotlight, it is unlikely that Fant Forstick will damage his career much. While most involved will appear set to recover, Fant Forstick did nothing to further the careers of anyone, least of all, Josh Trank. The contract between Fox and Marvel postulates that unless Fox has a new Fantastic Four movie in production within a specified time frame after the release of the previous one, the rights are forfeit and will revert to Marvel. While the details of the contracts are known only to the legal divisions of Fox and Marvel, many speculate that this specified time frame is seven years, based on the time lapse between Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer and Fan Four Stick. Fans are overwhelmingly in favor of the Fantastic Four rights reverting. And there has been considerable interest in learning if Fox will in fact proceed with another sequel or reboot despite the losses incurred by Fan Forstick just to prevent the rights from reverting to Marvel. Before Fan Forstick opened, Fox seemingly wanted to combat the immensely bad buzz by greenlighting a sequel, which after moving some weeks back and forth, ended up scheduled for release on June 9, 2017. Immediately after the disastrous opening weekend on Monday, August 10th, 2015, Drew McQueenie of HitFix claimed that a sequel was still happening, but with another director, and that it might not be ready for the planned release date of June 9th, 2017. McQueenie wrote that, The next filmmaker in is going to start from a difficult position, and they're going to have to work hard to create their own movie while starting with some of Trank's choices intact. For better or worse, Trank was given room to define these characters, and his signature will remain on the next film no matter who writes and directs it. The next movie will be a reaction to this one. More than a month after the movie's release, on September 14, 2015, even after it was clear that it had flopped worldwide, writer and producer Simon Kimberg still spoke as if a sequel was happening. At the premiere of The Martian, Kimberg said, We're figuring out what that movie would be. I'd like that to happen. On the movie's reception, Kinberg said, I was obviously disappointed. I was most disappointed that the fans didn't like it. I care more about them than I do anyone else. But I haven't done a full deep dive on it. Do I think it was unfairly treated? I don't know. The next news item regarding a sequel came down a month later on October 15, 2015. Sean Madden of Heroic Hollywood, a major defender of the movie prior to its release, insisted a sequel was still happening and that there were plans in motion for the franchise that Fox would not scrap. Finally, on November 23, 2015, word got out that Fox had quietly and unceremoniously removed Fant Four Stick 2 from its release schedule, not pushed it back to another date, but removed it, period. Sean Madden, who as we saw still insisted a sequel was happening a month earlier, simply tweeted, Fantastic Four sequel isn't 100% dead. I'll leave it at that because I don't feel like further commenting. On January 6, 2016, actor Tim Blake Nelson shared his doubt on a sequel happening. I think it's off the schedule, he said. I don't think they're making one, but I'm not sure. This came as no surprise to anyone who had followed the development of the movie, and there are more indications that Fox are done with the Fantastic Four. Before Fantastic Four opened, Fox published this picture of the stars of their Marvel Universe. 
In January of 2016, Empire Magazine posted a new version of essentially the same picture. The photo has been digitally altered. There is a new background and clearly alternate pictures from the same photo shoot are used. But the most striking difference is that the Fantastic Four, Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Mara, and Jamie Bell have all been removed. In their places are the supporting cast of Deadpool. This is a subtle yet strikingly clear indication that the Fantastic Four, at the very least this incarnation of them, are not a part of the future of Fox's Marvel Universe, or rather Fox's X-Men Universe. Even before the formation of Marvel Studios, the relationship between Fox and Marvel has been a strained one. There are a number of reasons for this. Partially, it is down to conflicts of interest as there are a number of characters and properties both see as rightfully theirs. Both Fox and Marvel have had some relentless, highly opinionated people in key positions which didn't help matters. Of course, any such situation can be further escalated by personal conflicts in addition to the professional ones. Previously, we've discussed Tom Rothman, the Fox executive who has been a constant thorn in Marvel's side. Marvel, however, had the enigmatic Ike Perlmutter, who, from all accounts, is not easy to work with, let alone sit on the opposite side of the negotiating table from. To summarize, for those who have not yet seen our previous coverage on these guys, Tom Rothman is responsible for pretty much every bad creative decision made on Fox movies between 2001 and 2012. Meanwhile, over at the Marvel offices, they had to take down all posters and pictures of the Fantastic Four and everything else that could remind Ike Perlmutter of Fox, lest he have a fit and start tearing the pictures off the walls in a screaming rage. Cooler heads prevailed, and both men were eventually removed from the positions where they could influence Marvel branded movies. Rothman was given the offer to resign from Fox in 2012, leaving Jim Giannopoulos in charge. Jim Giannopoulos was able to bring back Brian Singer into the X-Men fold. This after Rothman chased him away and destroyed everything he had set up in the first two X-Men movies. In a Disney restructuring in the fall of 2015, the responsibility and autonomy for Marvel Studios was taken away from Ike Perlmutter and given to Kevin Feige. Perlmutter would still control Marvel Entertainment, but Feige would run the movie division without reporting to Perlmutter. Kevin Feige, of course, is ultimately in charge of the Marvel Cinematic Universe now, but he started out at Fox, and from what we can tell on the outside, is on good terms with the people there. Furthermore, Feige was the one who was able to bring back Spider-Man to Marvel Studios. Can he perform a similar feat for the Fantastic Four? There are indications a seismic shift might have happened in the relationship between the two. Rumors that Fox were developing an X-Men TV series first surfaced in late 2014 and were confirmed to be accurate in early 2015. However, Fox only have the X-Men movie rights. They can't make any X-Men TV series without Marvel's consent. With Ike Perlmutter still running the show at Marvel at this time, prospects for that happening were not good. This was at the time when allegedly Perlmutter mandated the Fantastic Four comics be cancelled just to deny Fox the promotion of an ongoing Fantastic Four comic being available in stores. It was therefore a shock to the world when, on October 14, 2015, two months after Kevin Feige got autonomy over Marvel Studios, Fox and Marvel announced that they would team up to produce two X-Men TV shows, Hellfire and Legion. We do not know the details of which continuity these series will fit into, nor do we know the details of the transaction. It is easy to see that Fox got two TV series out of it, but the view which some hold that Marvel simply settled for cash while giving a corporate competitor more TV shows to compete against their own might be a naive and simplistic one. The day after the Hellfire and Legion announcement, Den of Geek published a report suggesting for that deal to happen, Fox actually had to concede the Fantastic Four movie rights to Marvel. Marvel, according to the report, were now free to employ not just the Fantastic Four, but also the Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom, and Galactus in any movie they saw fit. Furthermore, one of the announced but unnamed Marvel movies set for release in 2020 was said to be Marvel Studios' own Fantastic Four reboot. This scoop was very quickly denied by both Fox and Marvel, who both insisted the Fantastic Four movie rights 
were still with Fox. However, it was two weeks later, on November 4th, 2015, that Rupert Murdoch personally singled out Fant Four Sticks' disastrous performance as the reason for the decline in the first fiscal quarter. In so doing, Murdoch ensured that any future announcement of another Fantastic Four movie at Fox would be met with an instant drop in Fox stock prices. Less than three weeks after Murdoch's statement, Fant Four Stick 2 had been removed from the Fox release schedule. Could it be that there is more to the Den of Geek scoop? Keep in mind, rumors that Spider-Man would find his way back to Marvel Studios were also denied in the same manner right up until that deal was announced two weeks after the strongest of denials. We'll discuss this matter in greater length and keep you up to date with future developments here at Midnight's Edge. If you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch all of our upcoming videos. For more podcasts, news, and reviews, check us out at MidnightsEdge.net and follow us on Twitter at Midnight's Edge. Also check out our Facebook group at Facebook.com slash groups slash Midnight's Edge.